In this video we are going to look into a topic that seems to polarize both veterans and newcomers. Firstborn versus primary space marines. Ever since the introduction of Cole's new generation of space marines, the range of their miniatures has exploded. With the Death Watch gaining access to most Space Marine units in 9th edition, this hot topic has certainly carried over to our list building by now. In this first part of a double episode, we will look into building a 2000 points list for the Death Watch, consisting entirely out of Firstborn Space Marine units. In the second part released at a later time, we will then attempt the same thought experiment with only Primaris units. Welcome to Swisshammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Before we dive into list building itself, a friendly reminder that I have previously released a beginner's guide to building a 2k Death Watch list for matched play. If you're completely new to the game and haven't seen this one yet, I recommend checking it out as it covers all the basics. The link is in the description. I am aiming these kind of guides at newcomers and older players returning to the hobby after an extended absence. In addition to that, creating a list like this on what I would refer to as fluff elements always brings the risk of not being as competitive as it could be. This is simply due to intentionally limiting ourselves to certain units, rather than making use of the full toolset. With all that said, let's take a look at building our Death Watch Firstborn list. I do stick to matched play rules, and while I may mention a Forge World unit here and there, I will also stick to units available in the Space Marine Codex and the Death Watch supplement. This is in order to make the list as accessible as possible. First, I would start by adding my auto-includes. In case of our firstborn only list, this is more of an auto-exclude, aka no primaries. Just aside, we are of course going to include the ever-popular apothecary with the selfless healer warlord trait. Surely you didn't think that we are going to skip this one. Beyond that, I would not want to put further restrictions, so we are moving right to meeting the requirements. As we are taking a battalion detachment, we have two HQs and three troop slots to fill. An easy task for a Death Watch army. First, we will start with the HQ choices. Fortunately, the Death Watch has plenty of strong HQ choices, and many of them are indeed firstborns. The Watchmaster himself, which is the Chapter Master equivalent, is actually firstborn, so this would be working in favor of a firstborn only list. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of his fixed loadout, and with mobility being fairly limited, so I would in most cases prefer a captain out of necessity. For firstborn choices, we have either a Senofe slash captain with a jump pack, or a captain on bike, two strong contenders. Depending on the exact loadouts, they will end up around the same price tag with the biker captain being a bit tougher and potentially cheaper, but without access to a Xenoface blade or the chapter master style rerolls from the watchmaster. Additionally, we will include a librarian and a chaplain, both with jump packs to keep them mobile. For the librarian, we pick the Xenoperge discipline with at least premorphic resonance and fortified with content. For this example list, I went for double warlord traits and a relic on the captain, paid for the chapter command upgrades on both the chaplain and the librarian, and also picked two additional relics, including the beacon and chalice, to pull a slow kill team up the board. Obviously, these exact loadouts can be adjusted as needed. I did not take the otherwise popular Dominus Sieges for the 5 plus Inval Safe bubble, as the majority of this list will have Inval Safes already built in. The widespread access to Storm Shields is a potential advantage of a firstborn only list and can free up a relic slot for something else. With the HQs out of the way, we are moving on to troops and the great strength of the Death Watch, the kill teams. In our case, however, by sticking to a firstborn only list, we are losing access to three out of four kill teams, 
which is no small thing. The one kill team that we have remaining is the Proteus kill team, which is at least the most flexible out of the four. On a side note, there's also a fifth kill team named Kill Team Cassius, which would technically qualify for a firstborn only list, but this one comes with a wild mix of pre-gear units that do not fit into an already pretty limited list, or most others for that matter. For more information on Kill Team Cassius, check out my guide to that Kill Team linked in the description. So, in order to make the most out of our firstborn army, we are including three Proteus Kill Teams into our list. For the first Proteus Kill Team, we are going to add five Terminators to the default five Death Watch veterans. The idea here is to make use of combat squads and use the Death Watch veterans as durable objective holders. The Death Watch Terminators, on the other hand, can be dropped in through their Teleport Strike ability and will be a durable close combat unit with OPSEC on top. Terminators are performing great overall in 9th edition and the Death Watch ones are only rivaled by the Death Wing ones from the Dark Angels chapter. While putting storm shields on the Death Watch veterans makes them quite durable, a possible alternative would be to equip them with Stalker Pattern Bolt Guns instead. Damage 2, with special issue ammunition on top, makes them excellent Marines killer. The second kill team is aimed at holding the midboard. In order to do this, we are making use of a variety of assets. Two Terminators with Cyclone Missile Launchers, two Deathwatch Veterans with Infernus Heavy Bolters, several Deathwatch Bolt Guns with Special Issue Ammunition, as well as a Black Shield and a Vanguard Veteran. This particular kill team can respond to both ranged and close combat threats and will be supported by the Captain and the Librarian. The single Vanguard Veteran also allows it to fall back and shoot if needed. While I would most likely keep this one together as a single unit, the usage of combat squads is also an option. In that case, the two Terminators, the two heavy weapons, as well as the single Death Watch veteran would go in one combat squad as a primarily ranged threat. The other combat squad is more close combat oriented. For the third and final kill team, we have a disruption unit that I recommend using with combat squads as following. The veteran bikers and the single vanguard veteran are mobile and retain the infantry keyboard. As the bikes don't have an invul safe and you don't want to lose the vanguard veteran, it's best to keep them as hidden as possible, which should be easy enough to do thanks to the mentioned infantry keyboard. The other combat squad is the standard durable death witch veterans with storm shields kind of approach. The reason this one has the Aquila specialism is tied to secondary objectives and our next pick, the Vanguard Veteran Squad. With the requirements and the core of our army out of the way, it's now time to fill any remaining gaps. In order to bolster our close combat capabilities, a full squad of Vanguard Veterans with jump packs, lightning claw and storm shield, are a strong competitive pick in a variety of Space Marine lists these days. With them ending up at 288 points, exactly the same as our third Proteus kill team, it gives us some flexibility when picking the While We Stand We Fight secondary objective. The Chaplain is also a good candidate to accompany this unit. One problem with building a firstborn only list brings us back to an issue the Death Watch used to have in previous editions. Anti-tank. No primaries means no eradicators, and we already have very limited access to attack bikes and no access to devastators at all. In order to somewhat counter this, we are going to include a good old venerable dreadnought with anti-tank loadout. Now, this guy is not as shooty as some Forge World variants, and those might be a more competitive pick. But as mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to keep the list as accessible as possible. In case you are going for a Forge World Dreadnought, you can drop a squad out of our next pick, the Company Veterans. For this list, we are going to include two minimum squads of two of these, or drop one, in case of going for a more expensive Dreadnought. I have covered Company Veterans and how to cheese the Command Squad in more detail in a previous video which I linked in the description. In short, they are perfect for character protection 
Action Monkeys or General Board Control. With all the war gear in place, we are going to end up at exactly 2000 points for this particular example list. But there is of course the option to take another Dreadnought, add or drop company veterans, downgrade some of the HQs and or take slightly different loadouts. If you wanted to go fully old school and ride with style, there is of course always the possibility to take the Corvus Black Star instead of the Dreadnought. One thing I would keep in mind though is points cost of the three kill teams versus the squad of Vanguard veterans in case you are going for while we stand we fight. As a final touch, warlord traits and relics can be adjusted as needed. So what are the potential strengths and weaknesses of this kind of list? What I think the list as well is army wide invul saves, opsec, flexible deployment and decent mobility. What it is clearly missing are popular meltdown plasma loadouts, but without access to primary units, attack bike spam or devastators, our options here are limited. The missile launchers are somewhat trying to compensate for this, but it is obviously not as effective. While I think that there is plenty to play the objectives game with, be it durable MSUs, widespread OPSEC, action monkeys, and the three kill teams potentially costing the most points, to name a few, I also think that the Primaris Indomitus power creep, as well as the latest codex creep of various factions, will make it difficult to go up against more recent and more optimized lists. While thematic lists like this make for good fun and friendly games, the opportunity cost from ignoring the whole Primaris line is something the Death Watch can ill afford. To wrap things up, by going purely for firstborn units, we are locking ourselves out of the huge range of Primaris models, as well as 3 out of 4 kill teams. In addition to this, currently popular firstborn choices of other Space Marine armies, such as attack bikes or devastators, remain largely out of reach for the Death Watch. However, through the highly flexible Proteus kill team, the Death Watch still has a few tricks up their sleeves. Many of the competitive HQ choices are actually firstborn, including access to the chapter master equivalent, the Watchmaster. In case of the captain, librarian or chaplain, I recommend equipping them with jump packs to keep them mobile, or in case of the captain, take the biker variant. Beyond that, we can build the core of our army around three Proteus kill teams, featuring Death Watch veterans with storm shields and bolt guns with special issue ammunition, Terminators, Vanguard veterans and veteran bikers. All of these units will gain OPSEC and can be deployed as combat squads, wherever desired. I recommend deploying the Terminators via their teleport strike ability. A slow moving kill team could also be pulled through the Beacon and Chalice. Outside of these three kill teams, we complement our list with a venerable dreadnought, or even a forge world variant, in order to get some anti-tanking. If we wanted to go fully old school, we could also take a Corvus Black Star over the dreadnought. Furthermore, a full squad of Vanguard veterans with jump packs, lightning claw and storm shield is a highly mobile, close combat threat that we are seeing used throughout a variety of Space Marine armies. To round things up, a minimum squad of two company veterans can offer character protection and or perform actions. Last but not least, we are of course taking a chief apothecary as well. While especially a purely firstborn Death Watch army can bring army-wide invuls, a lot of OPSEC and potent HQs, the opportunity cost from ignoring the entire Primaris line combined with the inaccessibility of attack bikes and the complete lack of devastators, is simply too great for such a list to keep up with recent codex creep. Whenever creating themed lists like this, expect a drop in overall competitiveness as a result. Doesn't mean that fun and friendly games or crusade style settings cannot be had. So that's it for building a Death Watch army consisting entirely out of firstborns. Have you guys been trying something similar? And what have you come up with yourself? Did I miss any obvious picks? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.